Max looks stunning. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Redemption 46 Studios. I'm Nick. I'm Young. I'm And I'm Curtis. You know the vibes. Y'all seen the picture. Y'all seen the thumbnail. Y'all know why y'all here. Max the demon. Devil, that is. Um, <laughs> nah, if y'all seen the priority, John, y'all kind of already know like how we was snapping when we first heard like Max's voice and everything. Um, yeah, no long time. I don't know what to expect from this. This is a special Patreon request, though, from Jules. Um, yes. She says she has seen that we uh, like was feeling him so much mm -hmm. that she wanted to kind of throw this in the mix, and she has some TVXQ stuff for us as well. And Jules a couple, never misses, yeah, so. a couple other people got some stuff too. Because as soon as as soon as they seen that we liked him, and they right, was like, right, we were right. waiting to kind of get into all that. They was like, now would be a good time to usher that in, fill our okay. SM pilot up like a little bit more. People probably already like it's overloaded. <laughs> it fell over. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, let's jump into this. I love the niggas are still outside, man. <laughs> it's a lot of fucking love. It's a lot of fucking love in here. Shit, that's artsy. They was getting money back then. Wait in the war. <laughs> it's a little scary in here. Oh my. Love that. So I'll just put her on and go and she can in my car. Get with her now each other. Tell her got a moment there today. Oh, 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 devil. Nice shot. I feel like this is the, the type of music they play when you get in the night and in the SM. So you were fucking window girl. <laughs> That's so cool. It 
it's ironic the song is called Devil, but his voice is so angelic. Um, well, you know what side the voice chose. Um, I'm lost for words. This is yeah, like, was... Max, welcome to the pantheon yeah. of uh, SM's Elite. Um, <laughs> off, off of two I tracks. I don't build, build this shit. <laughs> nah, I work hard for this. <laughs> I mean, damn if I let you turn it down because you don't like the way a nigga sing. <laughs> hey. <laughs> nah, this Jules, Jules, baby girl. God damn. You don't miss. This a fucking, this a, this a song, man. Oh, so, this just came out last year. Yeah, that's why I said he's still on song. <laughs> oh, I thought this is, okay. <laughs> no, that's not old. He's he still man, outside. Graphics <laughs> a little too fresh. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's still outside. Um Shit. No one, it got subtitles on, so it's definitely post uh, 2018, <laughs> 2019 SM. Yeah, because they didn't re release too, you know, they'd be like, we gotta get the stuff back out. Um, SM, man, it's it's getting hard to just have these conversations because you just sound like you're just gonna be saying the same shit every That's video. Like, damn. Um, how, how is this? <sighs> and you know what's funny? So it's not like SM can't give their artists. A song like this, this is one of those songs, Kurt, where we say like it's something introspective or something that's pushing a boundary of the music that an artist makes or whatever mm -hmm. like that. Um, so I guess this would be like a song we looking for from like 127 or like not. It don't have to be the exact same song, people, but something like outside of what we know them for. We know they can crush an R&B love song. We know they can crush like. You know the hip hop sound, and then the futuristic EDM tech sound. Those Where perennial songs that make you like an artist. Yeah, where it's the, just the, like the, the artist the known as colors. Yeah, the artist known as as Hensha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, imagine Young <laughs> doing this. Yeah, you know so what I'm saying? and that's what I. This is a perfect example of what I mean. So, like I said, we see SM. They can do that. So I guess it's just to be. It's probably more to be expected when it comes to like solo material or something mm -hmm. like that, because. But that's why I said Jeez. I definitely, I definitely do want to. Uh, I do wonder who wants to do those exactly. things. That's what I mean. Versus, yeah. yeah, versus I don't like think maybe uh, all like, in the group members probably like, nah, bro. I I'm chilling. Or, 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 or I like yeah. rapping. Or I like this. Bro. I, don't, I don't get into that shit. Yeah, because right these up. these are those. I'm not gonna say obscure songs, but definitely those songs where you, the where other you, thing. Yeah, like it's just the other thing. Because it is cool, and SM is decent at doing like the turn up type joints you know we get money we better than people um you know we having fun um like you know but when it when it comes to like these other little uh like gems like this and that, like that shit is just different he it seemed like he was like looking for like salvation or something throughout the whole song i, like, f I felt like it was a choir with him mm -hmm. that shit's oh, that I was about to say, oh, it's, it's getting the move later. Like, no, it's, it's, I have the fact that the, the church kind of choir aspect to play into the themes of kind of, you know, the. Mm -hmm. the That's what I'm saying. It seems like he's looking for salvation it, yeah. throughout the yeah. whole song mm -hmm. and everything like that. Anytime someone says rain down on me, you already know. You know it's like I'm like accepting rain. my pain. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm accepting the punishment and going through it. Yeah, so it's, it's, I agree with you. Um, Like everything that was done here was just like decent. The choreo was like. Not so much uh like like hip hop elements, but it was so much. It was it's up tempo, but also contemporary kind of at the same mm -hmm. time, because the beat is structured for you to have like those slow small movements, yeah. but then you can do power, and then it's just like oh, okay, There's so, much so negative space in there, you could kind of dance either super slow or or super or fast. Super fast if you no want. like real mm -hmm. like tempo to how you have to dance into this song. You mm -hmm. can really go either way, and I think that's uh for the. For the better of the, for the song and everything like that, like I said, it gives I you so just, much flexibility with the choreo. Yeah, that was that. Now that's a fucking performance, man. Excuse my language, people. That's that's a motherfucking performance right there. But that shit was crazy. So like, obviously, um, like you know, hopefully on the Patreon and shit, we just talked about kind of what you know Ning Ning was doing and really what um, a few other artists were doing. Just in this small sample size, he did so much. Mm -hmm. Um, it's so many runs going on in the background where he's kind of like just sneakily kind of throwing his voice around uh, like in the background. Yeah. Um, the layering, head voice, chest voice, belting. He is, I love his falsetto. Like it's yeah. just like, it's so clean. And uh, it's like his voice is lower, but I know sometimes some people may not, I don't want to call someone squeak. Yeah. Um, but sometimes some people are like slight squeakers where it's like, you, uh, 
I know certain people's falsettos who I even like their voices may annoy some people. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> their voices may annoy like some people, but I feel like he walks a good line of getting super low, mm-hmm. but it's not like annoying or like too like screechy. Um, it still comes out very smooth. Um, I like his aesthetic and the look that's going on. Um, this, um, you know, I don't want to really uh, like compare because I was thinking of anything uh, like SM other like other SM artists that we kind of seen like in a similar vein. Um, this it was, was almost like Taming vibes yeah. a little bit, but the like I said, like not so. Some- the vocals like Beck. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying. Like, idea. Uh, yeah, that's yes. what I mean, uh, especially mostly because the white. I was about to say, yeah, and the dancers behind them um, too, and it feels like a heaven, hell, or heaven. The farce, the uh, set piece, and everything, mm-hmm. it's really like purgatory, maybe, and everything like that. Like you said, he's talking about his regrets and the uncertain times and everything like that. It just feels like he's thinking of salvation and getting through a dark time and. Damn it, man! This for this to be called devil, it sort of feels a little heavenly. I told it's you, little, you know, and like <laughs> spiritual. Damn it, man! This is a, this yeah. This is like this is a download by the way and shit. Like it's just this is, and not only like and and that's t- like that is great music. So like sometimes we be having conversation in here about like vibe versus context, mm-hmm. um, where sometimes uh, like as a music head. I know some people might be saying bullshit, but the vibe is there. So it's just like, oh, okay, cool. Like, I understand what this music is for. Um, sometimes, contextually, people will be saying a lot, um, but, like, it's no vibe or you're not really feeling the song. But, they, like, you know, you get the message, though. Um, this is, like, that good pairing where it's just like, dog, it's, you can play this in the will. You can play this at the gym. Um, and, like, the song is, he's talking about something, too. So it's not, like, bullshit, neither. Uh, music and music. You're a director. <laughs> if you're a... Um if you had the, if you're scoring a scoring a movie, what would you score? What kind of scene would you score this with? What's the character going through? Um, personally, um, oh. well, yeah, well, you, raining down on a church scene. I was about to say this. Down. This could be a this could be a fight scene. Um, I would play more so this um, for when someone has. I don't want to say accepted their demise. Yeah, they um, lost somebody. Yeah, like kind of like the lowest of the low. Um, almost and shit like you know someone's in the hospital or something yeah, happened. Quarter mark in the film. And yeah, um, so literally kind of right before lowest final point act. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it'd be kind of like that. Like you know, I don't want to. I was about to say something fucked up. Like yeah, someone's in the hospital. They're dying and like the person's like at their lowest. And the doctor told them that like they're not gonna make it. And they're in the hallway. And this song comes on. And, our, and they yeah, start they trying to speed on. home. And it's yeah. raining in the car. And uh, you know, to the final they're, actor to the final <laughs> boss or the villain. Ironically, I almost get a little bit of and not to say particularly with context but more so like with um like the way these kind of films write out themselves mm-hmm. i guess um almost like you know in boxing movies how you have to have that defeat but then it's like the training montage to will yourself back but there it, is no tomorrow rock yeah, yeah. i feel like a rain down on me would be almost like training montage shit where it's like you know I, i've accepted whatever my flaws this is going to be the final push to kind of get me back into that so when that Creed fight. when Creed lose to Jonathan Majors yeah, and Jonathan shit, Majors this comes him, on for the training montage right before the last fight with Jonathan, Jonathan Majors. Majors break his jaw, have him eating uh, mashed potatoes for like six months or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Especially with the way the song and especially with the rain on me, I would want like you know Michael B to already be done training and yeah. be like you know breathing all hard, Definitely but the training is complete body now. Body shots and stuff like that, like <laughs> the rain down on me. You see like the stadium <laughs> lights right before the fight. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like, yeah, okay. Damn, we yeah, just huh? like, yo. oh yeah, it ain't cool. Oh, and Michael B. Jordan directed that, so Michael yeah. B. Jordan would be st- in there like, yo, good look. We gotta do some post, uh, <laughs> some post production. Like, call that man. Like that. Yeah, bring him back. Let's put this in. The, let's put Facts. this song in there. Oh yeah, not to be in a prisoner moment too. This is uh, this is one of my favorite SM things we've done in the past two months. This might be like top five. Wow. And we done a lot. Yeah, how you feel, Kurt? No, this this was really amazing. Um, and just that, like there, there's so much symbolism that's kind of layered throughout here that I, that I really loved as well. And um, like basically, just to speak on his vocals, I mean, the power in which he was pulling from the vocals, um, it really, it really was so incredible. Um, and I haven't heard any of his kind of you know previous work. I don't believe I was yeah. here from this, so this like would be the first song that I actually have heard from him. Um, and I'm not too partial or, or knowledgeable, at least, to kind of what TBXQ is. I just know they're a really goaded kind of yeah. group um, that help, you know, really. Someone said real niggas. 
So I don't know. Well, I mean, nonetheless, it was just it was just the fact <laughs> that they. Just I know they have like a, like me. I know they have like a long history and kind of you know are goaded in their own right and everything. So just even getting like snippets of this, and I believe y'all had said he's the Machne of uh, TVXQ. Mm-hmm. Um, so just stuff like that is is really incredible information. His vocals though, are are so powerful, and um, again, the fact that you're saying it feels like it's coming from a place as far as like you know the whole. Uh, battle between good and evil, you know, knowing your place, like in the universe, or kind of making sense of kind of what those things mean. Um, briefly touch on, well, okay. Um, so looking up a little bit of the whole deer thing, mm-hmm. um, I was finding that there's a little bit of cultural context between uh, deer being the the metaphorical connection between a god and a shaman, basically someone who would interpret the kind of religion and spread. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the whole idea of the 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 eyes of the deer glowing and everything, and then the, the eyes glow on the um, Chengmen right. as well. So, like, you see, like, that, that'd be, like, the transfer of kind of... So, not to say so much that, like, the deer is God or anything like that, or that Chengmen then becomes God in that situation, but more so that he would take on kind of the, the persona of the bridge between the mm-hmm. two, which kind of further plays a little bit into the temptation aspect. Um, so, I really like that as well. But the thing also that kind of stuck out to me in regards to the deer thing is I was thinking about uh, Train to Busan, um, and the deer is the first victim um, of the virus or whatever that kind of spreads the zombie virus. But knowing the cultural, or at least snippets of the cultural context of what a deer represents there, um, that makes it hit a lot more because now you're saying essentially you're questioning faith. You're taking the essence of kind of something, you know, that's uh, sacred in a certain regard, um, at least to the portions of kind of what I'm seeing. I'm sure there's a lot more to that and different interpretations and things. Uh, but at least to that extent, kind of taking something that represents something like that and making it be the quote-unquote like patient zero yeah. uh, sort of thing. So that adds a little bit of a twist of the knife to kind of some of the deeper themes in that and kind of how people lose faith in times of uh, those things. So I just found that really interesting. I just knew the deer wasn't random, you know what I mean? Like I knew it was chosen like very specifically. But to add to that, um, noticing in the choreo that um, the stacking of everyone was the deer antlers. Mm-hmm. Everyone was kind of hunching over each other. But it's also um, like what we had said when we had checked out, ironically another uh, SM was... Um, the the red velvet it was um i don't want to say if it was uh monster oh yeah we checked out the choreo for monster and it was basically the the where we said the demons it you would have the background or anyone behind you kind of hunching over you to create that silhouette of like you know what lurks like whether it's the shadow self or anything like that nonetheless i got a similar vibe uh with this as far as like the subtext of kind of how you stack the things and everyone having the branched out kind of arms and such yeah Uh, so i thought that was really cool and then obviously you go back and forth between uh the subtext of the black, um, you know, outfits and then the white outfits as far as, you know, uh, where you represent in that tug of war, so to speak. But I like that they kind of end it and have so much of the set pieces um, with him in the purple suit, which is, I assume, like uh, the real him, I want to yeah. say, or like the person who he is currently as opposed to the person who's trying to tug him to each side. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought that was really crazy as well. And the whole rain down on me and it feels like there's like set pieces that have like either arrows or something like that that look like they're kind of arched um, to have been targeting him in some regard. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I thought that was uh, really impressive as well. And then lastly, I was going to say, uh, even in some of the opening lyrics, how it was like um, the the reality always pushing me to the, the harder decision or something along those lines or like the more difficult path. Basically, like every path I'm kind of coming across feels like it's like the, the hardest one to where that easier path, wherever you do find it or come to find it, would be the temptation, I suppose, where it's like, you know, why am I doing this this hard or why am I, you know, trying this when I could uh, be doing this? And I'm sure there's, you know, any kind of metaphor you can read into that. But I thought those lyrics um, were kind of the ones that really stood out to me the most um, among this as far as like the core elements of the theme and everything. Um, and and they, they really snapped in this um, as far as, you know, the vocal power, the choreography elements, and then really just telling an incredible, um, you know, story throughout that. I definitely, music video-wise, got a little bit of uh, team and idea as far as, um, you know, the whole the whole forest and silhouetting kind of aspect of it, tug of war between, you know, good and evil. Um, and this this was really incredible, though. And, and, and just, again, you know, for how much K-pop we've done, um, to kind of know that there's still these incredibly goaded, uh, you know, artists and groups that we haven't even, you know, scratched the surface of, so to speak. Um, it, it just makes me all the more excited to always, you know, be happy to check out things. So absolutely, um, thank you for that request as well, Jules. Yeah, TVXQ debuted 20 years ago. <laughs> Second gen. 20 years ago. Um, it's a five-member group. Um, three of the members left like in 09. Um, and right now they're a duo. So it is just Max and you know. Um, who've been with SM for over 20 years. Um, 
uh, obviously, you know, the other bros left over contract stuff or yeah. whatever, and I think some might want to go do their own thing or whatever happened, you know, kind of happened. But um, says a lot, too, with SM for being able to retain talent. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to speak too much on the contract situation because I know even them themselves had to learn how to, you know, treat some people better and how to manage and work the contracts. Um, you know, and it seems like all that is kind of working out for itself now. Um, but it does says a lot to me when, you know, certain people stick around for 20 something years um, with a label. Like you said, Lo, you wasn't kind of joking when it's like, motherfucker, we kind of helped build this house. Yeah. Um, oh, well, you, you know what I mean? So it's when we was watching, you know, those uh, top 10, you know, during certain years and shit, we seen people's names keep popping up. Mm -hmm. And even the older guys, when we did like the rises and a couple other joints, definitely kept mentioning. Uh, like you know TVXQ so it was a thing um, and I know last time we did the stuff it was a lot of people who said like they uh, weren't into K-pop heavy during that time and were a part of the fandom and everything yeah. so they kind of was uh, some redeemers were outside when all this shit was going on exactly. um, so you know I think that's decent and y'all know how I feel about like music now I feel like people can be 50 60 years old and still putting out content um, especially if you still have something to talk about. Right. Um, so, you know, the fact that SM still has, like, you know, second and first gen people still putting out content and working with third and fourth gen people is just, like, amazing. It's a beautiful time of music. I think you said it before. This is the best time ever to be a K-pop enthusiast. Yeah. Um, you were literally getting a little bit of kind of everything. Yeah, I had, uh, one quick thing as well. Mm -hmm. um, I did really like uh, the choice in the soulfulness of his voice um, as far as, again, you know, as we had said, that tug of war between kind of good and evil but also one other thing i noticed towards the end was how you know i said the deer represents like that kind of um like almost like what a um what it seems like at least is like a representation of god but then to pass on to like a shaman who would then kind of interpret that as opposed to like like a straight up just representation of god at least to again mm -hmm. you know the limited knowledge i have on it but i like that they had the antlers be gold like a halo like yeah. angel wise but they had the eyes be red like, like the, the devil, devil. Mm -hmm. so at the end you kind of don't get a, a final answer so to speak um so i like that um because the song is called devil but ultimately um it's something that you still kind of it, it's like the yin yang effect where there has to be like a little bit of bad in the good a little bit of good in the bad to to kind of achieve like some sort of balance um, or at least acknowledging that side kind of within yourself. Um, so I, I just think that that was really layered and um, the symbolism is incredible as well. So definitely uh, curious to know kind of more about the, the behind the scenes aspects as well. Um, but him adding like all those soulful elements um, really, and as you had said, you know, with the aspects of like salvation, like kind of fighting for yourself seemingly, um, it, it just really, it just really kind of hit on all levels, I would say. It's funny, the track list for uh, his EP. It's crazy. In 2022, it was only his second EP. Yeah. Devil, Maniac, Fever, Alien, Dirty Dancing, Airplane Move. Um, nah, uh, Jules, you got to really put me on. He got a joint called Lie with Chung Ha. Um, High Hills, Chocolate. With this first album about Jules. Yeah, yeah. Next time we'll see, we'll see where we about to go with this. Nah, um, yeah, so jump jump uh, in the comments. Let us know how y'all feel about this. I do, uh, we, we are going to be getting into TVXQ stuff, uh, like, here on this channel. And I do want to know more about Uno as well, because he smoked. I want to know um, more about Uno. I want to know about <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, give us more information about these guys. Other than that, we love y'all, Redeemers. Love we gonna holla at y'all. Peace. Yeah, he smoked. He smoked this joint. That was crazy. Yeah, this is really crazy.